You guys know on this channel, I try to stay as positive as I can. But I have to say these words. Here we go again. What's going on, guys? What's going on, 27 Squad? Welcome back into another video. And man, I wish I could come on this camera. I beg your pardon. Pause. I wish I can get on this camera and have better things to say than what I'm going to say today. But first, a word from our sponsor. This video is being sponsored by BetUS, America's favorite sports book. BetUS is the only sports book that is offering a 125% sign up bonus up to $2,000 on your first three deposits. You are not getting a better deal than that on any market. So sign up today and get on these future odds before the season even starts. Before the Giants play the Texans in the preseason, Malik Neighbors was a whole plus 1500 to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. After the game, it went down to plus 1000. So hurry up and take advantage of this bet because the more that Malik Neighbors starts to show off that skill, the less that number is going to be. Right now, I am going to take that bet to the house and I'm going to be hoping that Malik Neighbors wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. And listen, this won't be the first time a Giants wide receiver from LSU wins that award. Best of luck to everybody and make sure you bet responsibly. This game was an absolute disaster. I mean, I was coming out of the, that Detroit game with a totally different mindset than I am right now. Usually you're supposed to build on with these preseason games into the season and be confident in your team. Well, I was confident against the Lions because that is a tough competitive roster with tough competitive coaches and we just bested them as far as physicality goes. It was not that way against the Texans. First off, right off the bat, let's talk about the first drive that the Giants had and Daniel Jones almost having his first throw. I mean, you can't make this up. His first throw was almost intercepted. You can argue that Malik Neighbors should have fought for that ball, but you can tell that ball, if you just zoom out a little bit, that ball should not have been thrown. He was all over that at that point, and it was tight coverage on a very small hitch route. There was no reason why you should have forced that ball to Malik Neighbors. And then to end that drive, Daniel Jones threw a good ball downfield. It was just happened to be incomplete. I want to see him try to make those throws. Do not get me wrong. If they're incomplete, but they're good balls, I'm fine with it. But on the other hand, there were some throws that he made that were not good. Um, like later on, like the first interception was just like, why? Under pressure, backed up in your own end zone. You're about to take a sack for a safety and you just throw the ball randomly. And it's right there for Jalen Petrie and Jalen Petrie. Oh my goodness. When I did my work on him, when he was drafted, whatever year that was, I think 2023, I did not expect him to be that good. He absolutely destroyed the Giants offense almost single-handedly. I mean, shouts out to uh, Kamari Lasseter and of course, Derek Stingley as well. But Jalen Petrie was doing his thing. He was everywhere, but he had a pick six. Daniel Jones threw a terrible ball. And listen, I don't want to hear the excuses. I haven't heard anything from any side yet. I was working today while I was watching the game. I came home, took a nap. That's why I'm uploading this the next day. I needed to take some time for myself. But I haven't heard anybody's opinion yet as of making this video. So I don't want to hear any excuses from that side. Talking about the offensive line. Talking about the weapons. Because now we have Malik Neighbors. Now we have the guy that you want. He bailed Daniel Jones out a couple of times here. Now we have Jalen Hyatt, who almost made that throw, which was a great throw. We'll get to that later, that back shoulder throw. There should be no excuses. The offensive line allowed, the starting offensive line allowed one pressure. One pressure on 19 pass, uh, pass sets, okay? The offensive line actually held up and was playing well. And that's something I think we should applaud as well. You know, that's one of the lone highlights of watching this giant starting uh, offense play uh, at all then you go to that second interception and this one this one I'm not I don't want to put too much blame on Daniel Jones for because he actually tried to force the ball downfield I would much rather see interceptions like that than the first one Jones tried to put it on a rope he didn't really you know traject it too high he tried to put it on, the, on, on a little bit of a, a tight um, arch and it just came up a bit short and it was intercepted 
Derek Stanley did a great job tracking that ball, and it was just behind Jalen Hyatt to the point that Derek, Derek Stingley was able to extend it out his hands and catch the ball like he was the receiver. Like I said, I don't want to beat down Daniel Jones for that interception because at least he threw the ball downfield and you're going to have mistakes like that. But I'd rather see a, a mistake like that than the first interception. And then the touchdown drive where Daniel Jones throws a deep ball to Darius Slayton. Again, trying to throw the ball deep. I really want to look at the All-22 and really try to see all the plays. How much we really design plays to go deep because we designed a lot of them last week. But we actually tried a lot more this week. Darius Slayton, I believe it was like a 40-something yard uh, deep ball downfield. That would have been a touchdown. I don't want to complain about this because I want to see Daniel Jones throw it deep more. I don't want to complain about this, but that was just not a great ball. It was a good ball. It was a ball that D Darius Slayton was able to grab, but Darius Slayton had to slow down for it, and he was tackled at the one. We want to see just beautiful deep balls down the field that lead the receiver down and get into the end zone. That's what we want to see, and I want, I hope that against the Jets, Daniel Jones is back out there working on those deep throws with his receivers. Because those are big differences between wins and losses. What if we went down to the one yard line and we get completely stalemated? Thankfully, Devin Singletary was able to punch it in on the second attempt, but he got stonewalled in the first uh, on the first play. What if that happened every single time and we had to kick a field goal there? It's a game of inches and the quarterback is responsible for the passing part of it. Again, you guys know I don't hate Daniel Jones, but this is what it is. And then the last drive, there were just a good, a lot of good throws by Daniel Jones. Throws that I really wanted him to make, you know, uh, in, in the other drives. But he had a lot of good throws, especially to Malik Neighbors. That that back shoulder, I love that they're working on back shoulder throws. That back shoulder to Jalen Hyatt is the Daniel Jones I want to see. Anticipation, accuracy, perfect timing, throw power, everything. Unfortunately, those are one of those plays that will not go down in the stat sheet or the highlights because it was out of bounds. Jalen Hyatt wasn't able to keep his second foot down, but it was a great catch, one-handed, and it was a great throw by Daniel Jones. That's the type of stuff I want to see on this starting offense. You know that the Giants perform poorly when the starting offense in just the second preseason game is out there for a whole half, and the only times the Giants actually scored against the Texans defense was against the second stringers. They put up 10 points versus the second stringers in two drives but they weren't able to do anything versus the starting defense now you could make the argument that the texans defense is just that good but i think it's just more so that the giants offense just isn't ready yet so let's see what happens with them in the preseason game against the jets if they play at all and i'll tell you what i am very disappointed in our defense now already in shane bowen's defense you're dealing with a little bit of a conservative defense a, a defense that just wants to rush for and kind of play off of coverage but today we saw no pressure at all there were no sacks i believe only a couple of pressures like one or two tackles for loss no interceptions no turnovers besides that one fumble that we got and that was about it. Now, I thought guys like Tay Banks, Trey Hawkins, and even roster bubble guys like Elijah Chapman played very well, but I don't think this defense really did much. I really expected more out of the defensive line. You know, you have Brian Burns and Kayvon Thibodeau out there. We had no sacks, barely any pressure. We didn't do anything to CJ Stroud. He was cool, calm, and collected the whole time. He looked like more of a veteran than Daniel Jones did. And the coverage wasn't great at all either. I mean, you you're depending on four-man run rushes to get there and you're depending on the the coverage to hold up but cj straw was dotting on us like swiss cheese and even case keenan was doing a bit of that as well so i am disappointed in the defense i'm going to be doing a whole film review as you guys know the film's going to come out tomorrow i'll probably have something like that up on monday or tuesday but uh man it was just it's just embarrassing just embarrassing i don't want to see this in the regular season i don't want to see it so that being said guys leave your thoughts in the comment section below thank you to bet us for sponsoring this video make sure you guys take advantage of that amazing deal 125 percent off of two thousand dollars on your first three deposits all that being said like the video if you guys like the video subscribe if you guys are new i'm kb and i'll see you guys in the next video Woo!